All right. Hello, everybody. I am Chris Van Pelt, one of the co-founders of Weights and Biases, a developer-first ML ops platform. Um, and today, we're going to be talking about where the pull requests for ML ops is. So let's dive in. Uh, first, I wanted to share just a little bit of background on the company. So we've been around for just about five years now. I co-founded uh, WNB with uh, my longtime friend and co-founder, Lucas Bewald. We both started a, a company called Crowdflower, which we branded to Figure Eight, um, all the way back in 2007, as well as uh, Sean Lewis, our, our CTO, a former Googler, and also a very good friend that is the mastermind uh, behind the, the Weights and Biases product. Uh, we are well-funded and have uh, an ever-growing team uh, from all over industry and academia. So uh, if anyone here at the conference is interested in a new job, we are very much hiring. So please do uh, reach out. I'll have contact details at the end of the presentation. Cool. So why did we start Weights and Biases? Uh, well, first and foremost, Lucas, myself, Sean, um, all of the co-founders are, are developers. We love making stuff. And uh, we've been blessed by this big ecosystem of tools uh, that have emerged over the last uh, couple of decades to help us write code uh, more efficiently and of uh, higher quality. So we have amazing tools like GitHub or GitLab for, for version control. Uh, we have deployment tools uh, from the awesome folks over at HashiCorp that just IPO'd, love their tools. Uh, CICD, we're big Circle CI users, uh, production monitoring, all of these tools we're using every day to build uh, the Weights and Biases product offering. But as we talked to our customers about building models, we saw this, this really big gap where oftentimes if people needed to version their data, they would just throw it into an object store and um, do that in a very ad hoc fashion. They'd be keeping spreadsheets of, of their various experiments. Um, passing around notebooks that, that aren't versioned to kind of visualize data, uh, and then writing a bunch of, of shell scripts for, for optimization and uh, productionizing models. So that's where Weights and Biases comes in. We created uh, a number of different tools to address these different pain points uh, in the MLOps pipeline. We're probably best known for our experiment tracking um, offering, uh, but today we're going to talk about uh, tables, artifacts, and uh, reports as well, which are really powerful features of the, the core Weights and Biases platform. So where's the pull request for MLOps? As a developer, I'm spending a lot of my time in GitHub reviewing code and having discussions, uh, as you can see here from a recent pull request on our main repository. I love pull requests. It allows us to uh, keep up to date, especially in these new times where we're all uh, working remote. And we have uh, a system of record where uh, we can go back and see exactly what happened. Um, and there's a formal approval process before anything actually gets deployed out into production. So where GitHub pull requests allow us to discuss changes to code, that often we assert with tests or automated uh, pull request checks. What ML ops need is a way to discuss changes to probabilistic models that we might not be able to put through a red green CI system, as well as data sets as they change. So now it's just it's not just the code that created the model. It's the hyperparameters that were passed into it when it was originally run. It's of course the the raw data that was trained on. Um, and we want to keep track of the, the ultimate model assets, uh, which are large binary files that you, you know, aren't, aren't going to push to get uh, generally. So this is where weights and biases reports come in to fill the gap for PRs in the MLOps world. Uh, weights and biases reports you can think of as a uh, live document, like Google Docs or, or maybe Notion where you can write text, paste images, uh, but right alongside that, you can embed any of the data that you persisted to weights and biases. So that data could be things like your performance metrics, such as we see here, validation loss or, or training loss. 
Uh, and it could also be your hyperparameters. So we can see below, we're showing uh, a diff of, of what batch sizes and image dimensions were passed into each of these different experiments uh, directly in a report. Now, the really powerful thing about this is the reports are, are live and dynamic documents. So I could click through to any one of these runs uh, in that report and go see exactly uh, how it was executed, where it was ran, what accelerator was used, what hyperparameters were passed in, which data sets were, were used to train it. So reports are also collaborative documents. Once you share a report, other members of your team can come and leave comments on any of the charts or any of the explanation or notes that you've left about uh, the iteration that's happening uh, within the MLAPS pipeline. So at its highest level, the primary things that we can track in reports are metrics, which we just saw, uh, plots. Uh, we have a very rich plotting library that I'll show in a moment. Uh, Hyperparameters, of course, so you know kind of what external configuration values were passed into a given Python process that ultimately generated your, your model or asset. Uh, any notes or observations that might be important to understand what was happening. And then the actual data sets and any predictions from trained models, uh, we can also visualize for users to really understand how um, their model is, is performing on real world data. So before I dive into some examples of these reports, I wanted to level set in a couple more terms. So one is artifacts. Artifacts allow us to keep a lineage of all data and the various operations that have happened in our pipeline. So here we can see a visual representation of this uh, graph where we had an initial job. So any Python process here is represented with a square and any circle is a, an artifact, which is a version folder of data. And artifacts are always connected to the various steps in your pipelines. So here you can see we had an upload, upload job that generated some raw data, which was then consumed by a split job, which generated some balanced data. We trained a model. After training that model, we also ran inference and generated some test results. All of these items we can visualize in reports, and I'll be showing examples of that in a moment. The other big concept I wanted to cover is tables. So think of tables as like a, a visual data frame where we can log arbitrary uh, tables of data while embedding any of the rich media types that weights and biases support. So here we're seeing semantic segmentation results where we're displaying a pixel mask on top of a source image. We support object detection, video, 3D point cloud data, as well as a growing number of different uh, media types that you might wanna view. And alongside it, we actually stored some prediction results for a given model. A really powerful thing about tables is you can also use them to compare two models. So let's say uh, you have a baseline model that you're currently uh, using to determine performance before you decide to maybe deploy a new version of a model. Uh, you could run this new model against that same evaluation or baseline data set and visually see exactly how those two models differ and use the rich table querying language to say maybe, okay, show me just the examples where the new model is substantially different than the existing model so that the team can make a choice about whether or not they should deploy um, that next version out in the field. So uh, I'm gonna briefly go through some example reports here. Uh, there's also a ton of reports that all of you can check out today at Fully Connected. So Fully Connected is our machine learning community. If you go to wb.ai slash FC, you'll be able to see some reports that have been published by various members of our community and get a sense for what's possible inside the uh, weights and biases reports functionality. But I'm gonna show a few key example reports and, and how they can be used like pull requests today. So the first is a model registry. So by using weights and biases artifacts, we're actually able to generate tables that show us exactly which version of our current uh, models are actually maybe in production, what's currently staged uh, or is the, the latest version that's being iterated on. And directly from the report, we can go through and click to see the exact artifact or run um, and understand how this was, this was actually created and any of the metadata needed to, to reproduce it. So this is super cool. Uh, here you can also see we've logged some actual errors from um, the model so we can see uh, you know, in this case, we predicted a one, the truth was a nine, 
I forgive the model here, but being able to look at where the model is um, not meeting expectations before you decide to launch that into production is uh, a really powerful feature of weights and biases reports. Uh, and then of course, alongside that, we can just use any of our uh, built-in visualizations such as scatter plots, line plots, or parallel coordinates here. And as mentioned, reports, just like pull requests, allow you to have a discussion thread. So any of these charts, I can come in and start uh, a discussion about, maybe ask more questions on, and the same is true for, for any of the text or analysis that has been done um, by the user. Uh, so here's a cool image generation report uh, using a fairly novel architecture out of OpenAI that was implemented in, in JAX by uh, Boris, who's a longtime friend of weights and biases. So in this report, of course, we can have links to, to various resources that may be important um, internally. Uh, but then more importantly, we can actually embed actual examples uh, from the model. So the team can come in here and visually see uh, how the model is, is actually uh, performing on real world data. And as mentioned, all of these data items are tied to actual experiments that have been stored in weights and biases. So again, we can always go back and see uh, exactly what was what was run here. Uh, cool. Another really fun report I wanted to show today is custom visualizations. So uh, this is a cool report kind of showing our custom chart functionality, which allows you to define arbitrary Vega specs that you can then embed directly within reports. So this allows us to visualize things like attention um, if we're using a transformer-based network, uh, more um, customizable bar charts, histograms, scatter plots, line plots, uh, ROC curves, precision recall curves, uh, you name it. We've really tried to design this system to be as flexible as possible. And now if I'm going through this report and have an idea for someone, I can always uh, highlight some text uh, and then be able to actually go and, and comment um, on the report. Cool. Uh, Finally, I wanted to show uh, a really fun feature that we recently launched, which is the ability to generate uh, 2D embeddings from multi-dimensional data. Uh, so here in this report, I've created a couple um, example embedding visualizations, one using PCA and one using TSNI. These charts were actually built on top of the data logged to this weights and biases table. Uh, so pretty cool. You can go in and do some really fancy stuff um, using weights and biases uh, reports and tables to help the team understand how a model is going to perform uh, before you actually ship it out to production. So the thing I wanted to leave everyone with is a little sneak peek into the future. So uh, we're hard at work now on some functionality called uh, WMB Launch. If you search your documentation, you can find some beta information about trying it. It's still early days. Um, but the idea with launch is we want to be able to connect to your infrastructure. So this enables us to do things like hooks in um, GitHub pull requests that could say, okay, anytime a data set is changed, let's go run this analysis job. Or uh, perhaps we want to just go tweak a couple hyperparameters on a job that's already been run and then rerun it with the new values um, to see what kinds of results we can get. So really excited for, for WB launch and how we can further automate uh, this review process uh, before we, we ultimately deploy models. So with that, um, I wanted to say thank you all for uh, listening to me talk today about MLOps and pull requests. You can find me on Twitter, it's at Van Pelt. Uh, my email is vanpelt at WNB, and you can see my uh, WNB profile at wb.ai slash vanpelt. Thanks a lot, and have a great rest of the day.